Well, this is interesting. We got a very a distinguished knife, I think, inside the box from a distinguished customer from Alton Brown, who uh, has been purchasing and using our knives for over 20 years now. And so uh, I'm going to open up this FedEx box with, uh, with an equally interesting uh, piece of Carter cutlery history. This is uh, one of uh, less than 100 serial numbered uh, folding knives that I made when we were over in Japan. So, let's see here. Let's see what Alton Brown sent in. Return shipping label. And, ah, very fancy leather Cutlery roll. Oh, look at this cute little tiny little neck knife. Aw, it even says Carter on it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cute little Damascus neck knife. I must have made that when I was over in Japan. That is one of a kind. Like, I don't even remember the shape, but that's a cute little thing. Little stabilized handle on it. Oh, and look at that. Four beautiful Carter knives. They're all circa last few years in Japan, an overly thick Nakiri. Man, I could make two Nakiris out of the steel that's in this guy, but yeah, some people like them hefty. But I'll definitely thin that down for him quite a bit. The inexpensive Japanese handle. And uh, we have a hand forged paring knife here in uh, black micarta. Also, uh, I think, yeah, that's back from Japan as well. Blue super steel knife back when I would uh, stamp the S in there with the black laminate handle. This was a precursor to our current Carter Cutlery Perfect Model kitchen knife. And a, uh, a wabocho. Yeah, well, this one's a little on the thick side too, with a W on there. That means it's white steel core. Uh, clearly, this is a problem with the handles, the early handles that came from Japan. Is uh, they'd come over here to North America, the handles would shrink a little bit because they would dry out compared to the high humidity in Japan, and these plastic ferrules got loose. Well, I think I'm going to take these handles off and put on some really high-end handmade handles, and see if uh, see if Alton Brown gets a kick out of that. So I spent a few hours yesterday and got all of Alton Brown's knives sharpened up and refurbished to the best condition I could make them. I want to show you the results real quickly. So this little tiny uh, pipsqueak neck knife. I rounded the corners on the handle. That made a big difference. Polished up the Damascus and made it razor sharp. A little more friendly in the hand now. This knife here of blue super steel. I uh, reground the secondary edge and kind of took the shoulder out of the uh, where the blade thickness met the beginning of the secondary edge or sometimes known as a shinogi. Shinogis look great but they actually impede cutting through a lot of things. So uh, polish that one up and improve that markedly. This little paring knife here I did the same thing. I uh, got rid of that very distinct shoulder between the uh, blade thickness and the secondary edge. And now on these guys, these guys really had the biggest transformation. Uh, so not only did I regrind and reprofile this Wabocho, but as you can see, we got rid of this uh, poplar wood handle and put on this beautiful handmade handle of desert ironwood micarta with a couple of colorful spacers. And this knife went through the most dramatic transformation. Uh, that it got a new handle, the blade got straightened, but this is probably a full ounce and a half lighter than it was before. And this is way better blade geometry for cutting through 
fruits, vegetables, and meats. So there's, uh, there's Alton Brown's blades there, and we'll stick them back in the uh, FedEx envelope and send them back today.